Right, people, you need to bear with me because this is my first attempt at doing this. And, you know, I've been on the phone to somebody half a day working out how to upload these things and that. Anyway, just sort of recapping to the other day and just sort of bring that all together about what's been going on and some new data that I've, I've um, sort of came across or been sent. And I'd like to thank, you know, a few ex old school cops um, who are now in the police force now and some healthcare workers and some legal people who obviously I'm not going to identify because it just wouldn't be fair. Anyway, um, let's go on with this one. The Civil Contingency Act 2004. Now this is a very interesting act here because this formulated them to be able to make these regulations, these emergency powers and regulations that formulated the COVID Act and the regulations, you know. And it was only meant to be used as a temporary measure. And now we're 14 months into it. 14 months into it, you know. It's meant to be reviewed every so often and amended and blah, blah, blah. And obviously that hasn't been a beauty. But the thing that's most pertinent to us is Section 23. Now, limitations of emergency regulation. Now, let's go to Section 23 once it decides to get old here. And let's look at that, at section 5b at the bottom, that's very important. Emergency regulations may not amend the Human Rights Act, 1998. So, as we've been out there in the field and, and fighting for our civil liberties and human rights, and we police, quite worryingly, I've said, and quite ill-informed, I've said, your human rights are suspended. And it's there. They're shouting, regulations, regulations, regulations. Emergency regulations may not amend the Human Rights Act 1998. So, I'll leave you to digest that. Um, also as well, is that um, when they've been given us these fixed penalty notices, if you go on, to the Crown Office and Property or Fiscal Service. There's clear guidance there for the Lord Advocate about these fixed penalty notices, what the police should have been adhering to, you know. They haven't been adhering to that at all, you know. It's there in plain sight, you know, everything that should have been adhered to. Nothing there in the refusal if you refuse a fixed penalty notice, you know. But arguably, what I've just discussed, that Civil Contingency Act 2004, these should never have been in place. You know? Are you trying to tell me we have these think tanks and we have these top QCs that they mean nothing about the Civil Contingency Act, Section 23, 5 Are you trying to tell me they didn't? Because I just couldn't believe that for a minute. Are you trying to tell me that Police Scotland didn't know? And talking about Police Scotland, so you can look, I'll put the links up to all these things, I'll put them up, you know. So, basically, the other day, um, we uploaded a video about the Freedom of Information request that we sent in on the 17th of um, March, and it was to ask specifically, I request a copy of the statutory legislation that states that gatherings are illegal below or above 30 people and the reason why this relied upon legislation is not in the public domain. I request a copy of the statutory legislation that permits police officers of Scotland on frontline duties and outdoor public arenas to make use of face coverings when engaging with the public. You know, and we expanded on that. And it tells you to explain there is no legislation which makes specific reference either to gatherings of above or below 30 people or to police officers wearing face coverings. So I'll let you work that one out for yourself, you know. What's happening with these police? And you know, it, it, it really is quite disturbing, you know, that um, the police are actually um, doing a biometric um, arrest 
and, and the breach in Article 5, 6, 7 of the Human Rights Act. A biometric arrest is when you can only see a set of eyes. You know, we've got these Americanized caps on. We've got, um, you know, these, these face coverings, you know, these North Korean face coverings, and you're getting a biometric arrest. Now, even in their own um, standard um, operations and procedures, and you'll see this here, is that it tells you, it tells you here that they are not allowed to obscure their face, you know, with dealing with the public. It's only common sense. It's only common sense. You know? So, the thing is, is that, just look at this. Um, if, I can, if I can find it. You know, you just have to be a roomie. That's here somewhere. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, right. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, but you can. You, this is this is all online. You can go and look it up. Um, it basically says that they have not to, you know, obscure the face. Now let me try and find this. You know, just just um, a bear with me. Yeah. No, I must have went too far down. But anyway, that also interestingly tells you about there if these officers are displaying tattoos and things and you know, we know that some of them do that and if you find that offensive that they're actually breaching um their own procedures, you know. Um so um let's see if we can find this bit. Let's see. Um Come on, Sandra. I'm sure you can do this. I've never. Uh, this is the first time I've done this. Um. So, um. I'm sure it was in the six point something. Shoulders. Look there. It's in head there. See that is. Um. Right. Officers. Yes. Six point four eight. Officers must ensure that their face is not obscured when engaging with members of the public unless undertaking duties such as public order when circumstances dictate the use of specialist clothing and equipment. So arguably that's when um, you know they're prepared for these riots and they've got these big motorbike safety helmet things on. But arguably you can still see the face and um, because they've got these sort of visor things and that over them. Um, you may know that police brutality goes on in assault. You have the right to see somebody's face who's taken away your liberty or threatening to take it away. Facial recognition, you know. It's, you know, a right under the Human Rights Act, 5, 6 and 7, you know. When I was arrested on the 11th, if, um, if I was arrested, because we're still trying to establish that, you know, um, you know, because many procedures when they followed there. Um, but um, this ill informed blue bib officer, I think they're called the Asian officers, um, I asked him to remove mm -hmm. his mask because we couldn't convey, reasonably asked him to remove his mask, we couldn't convey it constructively. And arguably, I didn't know if it was him who was talking to me. And he said he would raise his voice. I think it was him who said that, but is that not a breach of the peace if people raise their voice in public? You know? You know, it's honestly, they're mumbling under these masks, you know, and you know, we've been normalised to engage with people with facial recognition, you know, and Regulation 7, the Coronavirus Regulation Schedule 7, tells you there's no legal requirement to wear a mask in a public arena, you know, outside. So why are they doing it? You, this is very concerning. If people don't think this is concerning, they really have to catch a grip, you know. Because the thing is, if this is the style of policing, that people want a paramilitary style of policing, you know, it's very, very concerning. Anyway, let's move on to that. 
And um, the next thing that we've got is that um, the stop and account stuff. Now, the bargain basement words that have been imparted to people have been engagement. That's been stop and account. We've had many submissions through. We've had many bits of footage through. And the police were going up to people and saying, what are you doing here? Where are you going? Now, just look at, let's look at the legality around that. Um, this here was a freedom of information request on the 4th of June, as you'll see. And it says, we wanted accountability for what stop and account powers are used in the data. And this says here, by way of explanation, Police Scotland do not carry out stop and account. So what happened in eight months? What happened from the 4th of June 2019 till April, May, and arguably on to then 2020? What happened? Because then they used it. Now, if we go in to... Um, the COVID regulations, the accused had the right to silence, and this is a recent bit of case law here. Um, a person by this regulation is not required by law to give the police the police their name and address. An appeal has ruled that Keith Neal, a 60 year old homeless man, had his conviction for obstructing a police officer by failing to give his details quashed by the High Court sitting in Cardiff. This gives weight up in Scotland as well. So it is an important judgment on the legal duties of the citizens under the coronavirus reg regulations. Mrs Justice Steen and Lord Justin Stinkman ruled that Neil was under no common law obligation or statutory duty to give the police his name and address. It's made in plain sight. You know? You just don't have people coming up to you in the street and uh, uh, saying, hi, I want to engage with you. I would think people were quite unbalanced if they'd done that, you know. So the contract transpires by, hi, where are you going? What are you doing? And for whatever conditioning people have with the police, a consensual relationship has now started. And they have no legal stand to be doing the stopping account, you know. So, let's look at this bit here. This tells you lack of stopping account powers. The police sometimes conduct a stopping account where they stop a member of the public and ask them what they're doing. There is no police power to conduct a stopping account and coronavirus restrictions and regulations do not and never have provided for one. Members of the public are under no obligation to answer an officer's question during a stopping account. They can remain silent if they do not wish to cooperate. There it's there. And that's a very recent paper. Very recent paper applies to UK law. And that was issued on um, 29th of March 2021. You know, it's not restricted to England and Wales. It's UK. You know, Scotland as well. So, people, I would just, you know, encourage you to, to, to think when you're out there and, you know, you know, under the 1995 Criminal Procedure Scotland Act, Section 13, if it has been alleged that you've been suspected of a crime, you know the procedure then. But this remains closed. Because the minute you open this is the minute that things happen. So, you know, I hope you have a good weekend and, um, you know, that this, this video has been helpful and there's a lot of data in it. So um, I'll put the links up to it and I wish you a good weekend.